Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you for joining us for another edition of DAX Machina. I've got uh, in the house tonight, I've got Anthony Pitbull, Canatella coming, uh, coming at you. And we've got a, a couple of special guests in the house tonight, William Nighthawk and Fred Roll from Alaska. William's kind of a surprise guest. We wanted to jump in and, and, and start uh, talking about, about uh, all the, all the different, different types of, of encounter stories uh, that we're, we're seeing up in some of the, uh, some of the places like Alaska and the, and the deep woods. And William and Fred bring a very unique perspective to this field. They're both Native American, and uh, I think they're – the mysteries that the, if we're going to solve this mystery, it's going to be through Native American lore, where it's going to take a, 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 not only observing their beliefs but accepting them as well before we really find out more about what the what this mystery really is. Uh, we, we've learned so many things over the years from the Native American culture that we, you know, that, that Western science largely ignored. Uh, like, you know, for years they would prescribe. Foxglove tea for heart problems, and foxglove is where we get the drug digitalis, which is a heart medication. Uh, just so many things like that, that 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 I think we have overlooked, and uh, we need to really examine these before we're going to really learn what we really need to learn about this subject. So, without any more any more ado, um, just want to want to jump right in and and uh, and introduce these guys and let them tell us a little bit about yourself, Fred. You're coming to us from uh, the farthest away, and I love your background. You know, unlike me, mine's uh, mine's just a green screen. Yours is the real deal. No, no, this is an expensive green screen, man. <laughs> it, it, it's costly. It, it's super high tech. You know, not everyone has it. So, yeah. Um, no, I'm I'm from Bristol Bay. I'm from Dillingham. Um, uh, I'm a Curry Young Tribal Council member. Um, uh, been ever since I was old enough to basically register. You know, uh, something a lot of people may not know is uh, the way they, uh, as far as categorize us when it comes to blood quantum, that dogs are the only other creature in which they use that method of, uh, you know, heritage. And I think that's right. dog shit, but I, I digress totally on that. Uh, so... You know, I was raised, you know, never turn your back on the woods, you know, and, and never whistle in the woods, never go alone, uh, especially berry patches, you know, things of this nature. You just you just never go alone. Uh, and I grew up with that that intuition of knowing where you're at in the woods and exactly what's going on around you. So, you know, if you guys catch me like swivel you know head on a swivel looking around it's because i got black bear brown bear and, and various other things around but not necessarily immediately but any movement you know it's i gotta i gotta check it out so i 100 percent agree yeah yeah william you want to introduce yourself tell us a little bit about yourself too well i'm uh Aguala lakota and shawnee um an ordained minister for the native american church and uh, the Métis Nation. Um, I've been in the paranormal field uh, researching cryptids for over 35 years. Um, basically grew up in the paranormal field. Uh, my mother was a black witch. So we all know how that goes with native culture. Um, it never works out good. So, but no. I, was, I was taught the same thing. The same thing. I was taught to respect going out in the woods I was told by my my father several times growing up that you know they know you're going to the woods before you know you're going to the woods. Um, they have we have to go with a pure heart. Um, we have to go without any ill intention to the environment, to the animals, or or them specifically, um, and just an overall respect for the land and, and nature. So. Right. We had similar. It, it was more uh, respect the land and nature. But when it came to the hairy man, it, it was always a point of contention. Like uh, you never can be trusted. Never follow them. Uh, they'll kidnap your women and children, eat them or eat you. And so I've never I, I wasn't I wasn't raised with any uh, 
peaceful context when it comes to the hairy man as far as alaska is concerned right and, well yeah they uh and the one thing about that i've always i've always said this and da and anthony know i've said this too um that alaska has the biggest and and the meanest as far as any any cryptid goes in any category whether it's two-legged no-legged four-legged and winged so yeah uh, you you definitely have a whole different uh way of having to look at things at more of a a dangerous type of a of a way of being um whereas down here in the lower 48 um we have that too but we don't have it as much um right. we have we have where you know you know when you're in danger down here with them because they're gonna let you know um and we were always taught not to look them in the eye to to you know when, when right. if you do sense them around to completely avoid the area i mean there's just certain yeah. things and we never go to the never go to the mountains or the forest without tobacco or some kind of an offering for them just in case you do come across them so but yeah they, there's there's a lot of similarities but there's a lot of differences too because like i said alaska's got a lot of the a lot more dangerous out there than than what we have down here so Let's yeah, kind of everything the, wants to oh, kill you up here. Yeah. Yep. Well, kind of look at the differences between the moose you find in the lower 48 and the moose you find in Alaska. The moose up there are much bigger and tend to be more okay. aggressive. Yeah, there, there's plenty of footage on YouTube. Uh, there was a poor guy uh, who was coming out of Key Bank and someone riled up a moose in Anchorage downtown there. Guy walked right out to a moose stomp and moose stomped him to death. I mean, it, it can happen anywhere, you know. Um, also, mm -hmm. being out on a snow machine or a dog sled trail, the moose, you're, you're more worried about a moose than the wolves because if you come up on a moose, it's going to turn and stomp you. I mean, that's yeah. just what they do up here, you know. Uh, Pink Dolly asked, yeah. uh, any sign of dogmen or just Bigfoot in Alaska? I, I haven't heard any accounts of dogmen, um, not even coming up. Uh, we do have something in our culture called uh, – hell wolves which are really large kind of like a dire wolf size but maybe a little bigger and uh that that's the extent of what i've heard personally now i i can't you know no one's shared any dogman experience with me so you know i i, I got nothing on that yeah yeah well, was, uh, the devil sorry, wolf, the devil wolves up there are just like the uh the chunk of work down mm -hmm. here um you know, we're uh, down here, of course, it's it's taught that they walk on all fours. Um, but then again, so does Bigfoot occasionally, too, um, if not right. all the time. Um, but, you know, there's been reports also of uh, of the chunk of work on walking on two feet. And, uh, you know, that right. always led me to think that, well, maybe there is something to this dog man thing being connected somewhere along the line with the uh, right. work on or, or, or the devil wolves, you know? So, right. And I don't, I don't discount any of it. Uh, I, I really don't. Um, I only try to speak from what I've, I've right. personally, you know, experienced and whatnot. And you know, the differences between the Sasquatch from up here and down there, I think it's purely uh, a, a distance thing and, and the lack of population. We don't have a, a long history of a large population to where there's been enough interaction over time and centuries to even have inroads to any kind of relationship. Um, everything up here is just primal, aggressive, and uh, not a single person that I've talked to or gotten an email from ever felt comfortable in the woods when they've had that feeling or a sighting. It's always a primal, I got to get the hell out of here. Right. Um, right. You know, and I've never had a friend make me feel that way. You know, even without seeing them, just their mere presence off in the trees never instilled a, a primal fear of death. So that's all I have to work with in Alaska. Let, let yeah, me right. preface that in Alaska. Right. Yeah, Tanya will ask, she says, what are, what are your thoughts on the possibility that encounters in Alaska being more Gugway than Sasquatch as they seem more, so much more vicious and aggressive? I, I've I've seen a picture, uh, an artist rendition of a Gugway. I've never seen anything like that. I've just seen variations of the same thing. Um, and, and I, I've never seen that type. Now, there, there may be, 
but I haven't personally seen anything like that. And I haven't had anyone share an encounter where it involved large canines. It's always been big block teeth, real wide jaw, you know, Native American looking around the eyes, flat nose, uh, that type of thing. But again, I, I can't be everywhere in Alaska. So I, I go on what I've personally dealt with and what people share with me. Yeah. Yeah. I had another question. It already scrolled up. Uh, let me find it real quick. Oh, okay. Billy Dink asks, he says, how does the hairy man survive in the long winters? What do they use for shelter? Oh, uh, there's cave systems all around. Uh, and I've, I've come across caves that you wouldn't see one day and the next day you see, and then you're like, oh, I want to check that out. And when you go back, you, you can't even make out where it was. So, uh, I suspect in cave systems, um, they're, they're seen in the winter time harvesting, you know, killing moose, uh, I, ha I honestly, I think it has to do with the cave systems in the mountains because a lot of the encounters happen within 20, 25 miles of a serious mountain range, you know. Well, and then you've got so many uh, old mine shafts as well. That too. Um, I've even heard, not, not from Alaska, but I've heard of them using uh, old beaver houses as a place to to get up into and hide out I've, I've heard accounts of them diving into ponds and going into some kind of aqua chamber of some kind and uh, reemerging in a different pond so yeah, I, the, I, yeah. that's a, that's the same with down here with the beavers the beaver dams the same exact yeah. the same exact things yep there was a guy yeah. up on lake of the ozarks uh, just was, this was five or six years ago. Are you guys f uh, familiar with the term noodling for catfish? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's some guys around here that do that quite a bit. And he said he stuck his arm up in something and it just couldn't feel anything. It was, so he went underwater and went in it and said there was a big chamber big enough. He could get in it and crawl back quite a ways and lay down. Um, he said there was nothing in it, but uh, it, it gave him the creeps and he got the hell out of there. And uh, it just makes me think that that's very likely something that they could be doing. It'd be very difficult to find them. Yeah, well, and when beavers get into an area and start doing their thing, I have footage on the Kings River uh, incident. Those beavers up there are prolific. Holy crap. Man, uh, if you guys seen the footage, it's it's amazing how uh, uh, just what they do. They'll clear a whole area of trees and make it a pond in a swamp. I mean, they... They corked off the King's River. Uh, I have footage of that. The, uh, a channel off the river was corked off. I mean, I, I, I don't put anything past nature. You know what I mean? I, oh, yeah. It's just I've seen too many weird, strange things that don't seem to be able to work, but yet they do. And so it, it's kind of, uh, and I'm sure William can attest to this. You know, when you're raised in a certain way, trying to explain those ways to other people when you're still young, it doesn't translate too well. Um, no, we're called crazy. Times, yeah, crazy <laughs> or what, what the hell me, they guys. smoking in Alaska? You know, yeah. that type of thing. So, you know, a lot of times the First Nations people don't want to come forward with what they know because of just that that type of deal. Um, me, I've reached a point in life, I don't I don't give a flying rat's ass what anyone thinks. I And I mean that. I, I really don't. I, I I couldn't care less about someone else's opinion of what I've seen or dealt with. And so uh, it, it, it just, it's aggravating when I'm talking to uh, someone from the village who's had a profound experience, but yet they don't want to, they don't want to be recorded. Uh, some of them don't even want their experience shared. They just want to talk to somebody about it because of that stigma of being a kook or a crazy are viewed as crazy in a community where everyone knows what's going on, but they won't, they won't talk about it. You know, um, it's, it's gotten to a point of, uh, they, they just clam up for the sake of clamming up without, you know, trying to, uh, assess the situation. Cause up here, the culture is you don't follow them. You don't mess with them. You just leave. Yeah. And it, it's hard to break that. So that's, that's one thing that I, I, I find uh, so much more, approachable to the Native American perspective because you guys grew up just accepting they were there. Uh, and so, so much of, of Western culture is like, oh, no, they don't exist. These cryptids don't exist until somebody has a sighting. And then it's one of those 
oh, oh my God, most mind blowing, mind blowing moments. And it's kind of sets right. the entire worldview on edge. But well, brother, we were we were never aware that the white man existed. <laughs> <laughs> Only got a glimpse of us in profile. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> That was a good one, William. I'm going to have to remember that, too. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, one of the things, though, wh even as a kid, I was a savvy young kid, you know, you know, four or five years old. I, They're just telling us stories to keep me out of the woods. I wanted to take my BB gun and go kill some rabbits or a porcupine or something, you know. And I figured the hairy man was just a story to keep me scared of the woods. I wasn't buying it until one day I saw one silhouetted in the willows started shaking a tree and screamed at me and, and then and there I was still real young it was before we even seen the one up on Black Bluff screaming and throwing rocks down at the boat uh, that during that time frame is when it went from being told a children's story to holy shit yeah. they're out to get you if they're around you know and uh, it's just just that thought, you know, I, I point out all the time that dentist up in Fairbanks with his footage of that one howling in the distance and then one real close to him a moment later. And that's what I try to explain to people as a, a perfect example of what happens if they're nearby. They they let themselves be known one way or another. And it usually ends with people leaving the area as quickly as possible. I love John Doe's comment here. He says, it's really weird how the people who have lived in an area for tens of thousands of years have a potentially better understanding of it than people who showed up 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny how that works. <laughs> he's, he's absolutely spot on on that. You know, and I think some of the scientists, they have that arrogance of I was trained in a book and therefore, you know, this established university, I have this book. You know, yeah. and the whole time they're in a library with a book and they don't go, you know, out here and, and, and do anything more about it. So, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, it's aggravating that they dismiss it so readily and easily. It, it's just a, a cop out is yeah. what it is. Well, it's, I it's mean, like you know. back in the, uh, the mid 80s, my cousin and I were uh, coon hunting up in the Glebe County and we heard a uh, panther scream. And uh, heard one of the dogs go to squall, and we got up there with the lights, and we saw a black panther. Basically, it's a melanistic mountain lion, but a black mountain lion just ripping this dog apart. And uh, so we told the conservation people, and they told us to our face after we reported what we had just seen that black panthers don't exist in Missouri. We, we were making it up. No, they don't <laughs> exist here either, but they do. Mm hmm. And now they, they, they pretty much say, oh, yeah, well, it's a rare genetic disorder and you don't see them that often. But they're seen a lot more commonly now than ever before. Yeah. Right. Well, I've seen I've seen trail cam footage of the border by Mexico into Arizona where it was a no shit jaguar tracing north. It, and they say that doesn't happen. Bullshit. They've been seeing uh, them in Texas. You know, yeah. It, it's like the, the cognitive dissonance with all these intellectuals is, is killing them. You know, right. they're so bound up with their arrogant fucking uh, intellect that they can't see past their own nose. You know, it's like, oh, I know better. And yeah. I, I don't respect that. I don't it's respect like my, my that. joke about the, the old British Museum. I go, oh, no, that couldn't possibly exist. And then somebody drops a body on their table. They're like, oh, I saw it first. I get to name it. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be quick how quickly the tune changes. I think we're at a tipping point as far as evidentiary, like, you know, just that point of acceptance. Because look at look at all the footage out there. There's so many people that will debunk it. But when you look at something that's legitimate, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, well, it's not a rabbit. You, you know what I mean? And And so many people... <laughs> Like with my channel, where's the photos? Where's the evidence? And I'm like, if you're here for evidence, then you're missing the whole picture, buddy. You know, uh, I, I can understand the whole want and desire for some kind of like, show me, show me. But you got to be careful what you wish for, too, because uh, I think some people may be misguided by uh, certain accounts of just a friendly being, a forest friend. I, I haven't seen any forest friend up here. Um, yeah. And again, speaking for Alaska only, I, I, 
I can't make that connection between the two myself. I, I just haven't seen any anything or heard anything. I, and there may be accounts I haven't heard yet, but I, I just on an overall basis, I, I don't I don't trust it and I never will. I, I mean, and I'm biased. I'll say that from the jump. I'm biased as hell when it comes to these things. I don't I don't trust them, you know. Yeah, even down here in the lower 48, you've got tribal tradition of them coming into camp and stealing people. And, and I'm not yeah. saying that's the, the case constantly. Uh, I mean, uh, William, uh, the, the Lakota referred to him as Shietanka. Yeah. Which yeah, basically brother. means big brother. Yeah, big brother. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're, they're I'm sure in, a, in an area where, where food is plentiful, and you're not competing for resources. There could be peaceful inter interactions, but when game gets scarce, you know the the, the two legged hairless guys are looking pretty looking pretty well, tasty. I mean, it, it, it's like I've all it's like I've always said though. You know, I mean, one thing I've made perfectly clear from every time I've talked to anybody, whether it's on a podcast, a show, or whatnot, or even a person, you know, I make it very clear. You know, if you're living in a swamp fighting every day to have a sur survive a meal, you know, against cotton mouths, against bears, cougars, you know, you name it, you know, you're going to have a little bit of an attitude and be a little bit pissed off. If you're up in Alaska and you're fighting yeah. grizzly and, and, you know, anything else that's out there that can, can rip the shit out of you, you're going to have an attitude too, because you're fighting to survive. Yeah. Right. So, you know, there's there's a difference, you know, in some areas of the country, there's game game is plentiful and they don't have to really fight to survive. But, you know, in certain areas of this country, you're going to find where they have to literally be a a real pisser and fight to survive. Well, so, yeah, just take the Black Plague of the 21st century as an example. When toilet paper got got scarce, people were fist fighting over in the aisles. Yeah, I yeah, mean, a woman you know, got stabbed yeah. by another woman. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> over toilet paper. Yeah. yeah, it gets real, man. Uh, you know, when it comes so, to toilet paper and women, it gets real. When so when you're competing for a limited resource, the competition can get fierce, and that we've seen that you know among humans. That, so we, we you know, it's not unreasonable to expect that the same thing in the animal kingdom. Yeah. Right. There's dip netters down in Kenai right now. I'm sure fist fighting over freaking salmon because they're all standing so close together trying to do the same thing. I, I, That's a waste of time to me. I got a creek right over the hill this way, about three city blocks away where the salmon come right on up it. You know, I'm kind of kind of spoiled like that. But again, it's it's Alaska. You know, it's it's just what it is up here. Right. So are they more, uh, are the uh, the hairy men in Alaska, are they more aggressive during the sa salmon run or do you just see them more? Um, we we see them more and there is a, uh, as far as all the accounts that I've received, they are more aggressive towards the fall. And I don't know if that coincides with maybe some mating rituals they may have, you know, just like other animals coming out of the rut, you know, that could be a determining factor as well. But uh, this is all just a working theory, of course, because we don't have enough data to like really get some concrete. You know, they do this. That's why they're here. This is why they're there. You know, this is what they're doing. Uh, and right now I'm just trying to click all the data I can. And that's why I have the map at the website, just an interactive map so people can see, you know, where these things are happening and the type of encounter by watching the video. Um you know, there, there's people that just see it and move away and there's no issue and others that are stalked and followed or, you know, their dog is killed or, I mean, it just, it, it varies wildly. And, and that's another, I mean, it's, it's boggling. You, you would think it would be a certain thing doing a certain thing every time. And it's just not the case. Um, Fred, there's something I wanted to ask you, um, you know, in your, your uh, encounter in that, in the, uh, the, the shack that you were talking about the, the, the first time yeah. you guys, do you think that was a, a resource thing or do you think you were the resource? The look in the eye, DA, um, that look told me all I needed to know. I knew in that instant I was food and I don't know where it came from. It wasn't spoke to me. I just knew it within me. It was that primal took over and that's when I shot through the wall autopilot 
is because everything in me was like, defend yourself, defend yourself. You, you know, it was like go time. Um, it, just that look, uh, you know, uh, it still, it still bothers me that I shot it three times center mass. I heard the bullets hit and it, it stopped moving forward, but it didn't even flinch. It was a 30 odd six, man. We killed walrus with that gun. Walrus, 2000 plus pound walrus are dead with that gun. And this thing just took it and was standing there still. And I, that bothers me. It, it really does. It, it should have went down I at least stumbled or, or something. But yeah, it, ugh. Ugh. <sighs> yeah, there's a, more there's a, questions, right? <laughs> yeah, here's another question from Joe Meisel. He says, What do you guys think about portals? I never seen one. Um, I'm not saying that they don't exist, but I, again, like you, Fred, I've never seen one or interacted with anything like that. So, William, what about you? Well, <laughs> uh, I guess you could say that the uh, the portals are that do happen. Um, what Bigfoot has to do, or Sasquatch, whatever you want to call him, Harry Man, Big Brother, what the, he has to do with it, I have no idea. All I know is my people have said for thousands of years that they walk in both worlds. And that may be a way that they go to both worlds. You never know. But, you know, I'm not I'm not by any ways means an expert. I'm just, you know, an old Native American, you know, and giving out some information, you know. So, yeah. Now, I could see where uh, like I, I don't know about the portals either. Um, and I, I think culturally there was not enough interaction with like ancestors and, and the hairy man to you know, even have any kind of point of view on that. But I think a lot of it could be explained as simple as natural camouflage. You know, we seen a female Sasquatch in 95 run into the trees. And once she hit that tree line, boom, she disappeared. I, I mean, it was it was almost instantaneous. So I, I could see where it could be perceived as a portal, per se. But it's just natural camouflage is like a duck in, duckling in the grass. It's just gone. You won't yep. see it. You'll hear it trip all day. You ain't going to see it. It just seamlessly blends in. Yep. That's a lot of bluff charges, too, that, that I've had, you know, and stuff in, in the recent past. So, you know, it's, you know, I, I believe that they can camouflage themselves and they, they have some way of, of picking up. I don't know. And it's like I said before, D.A., you know, mankind's gone one way with technology, mm -hmm. but these cryptids have stayed to the natural laws of the earth you know they have embraced the the power from from the environment and from other animals you know and you know they use that medicine that pejuta that medicine to to you know <coughs> make themselves be able to do certain things just like our medicine people do in ceremony you know yeah so it's you know it's all it's all depends on how you want to perceive it if you if you want to take the native american way of looking at it and like like fred and i you know and you know and realize that this is a danger but yet you need to treat it with the respect that native people have treated with it over thousands of years okay by of either avoiding it altogether or somehow working through it okay depending on where you live all right. Right. The other thing is, you know, don't show up when it's meal time. <laughs> you know? I right. mean, yeah. you know, I mean, when somebody shows up at your house and the dinner bells ring and, you know, you know, it's Native American, you know, tradition to actually take the person in and feed them, you know, just like mm -hmm. they were family. Um, but, you know, you're still going to be a little bit, you know, pissed off if somebody showed up you know what i'm saying so right, you know right. it's taking it's taking food away from your family so you exactly. know but i mean we're still taught to share you know right. because yeah. that's the way we do it you know and uh you know unfortunately they're not the sharing type okay they're not gonna no. you know sometimes you know sometimes right. and this has happened you know with fishermen you know when when the, when you leave them some fish and stuff you know 
sometimes the fishermen will come back, you know, and they'll notice that there's, they left one fish for them out of like seven that they left for them, you know, which in right. that, in their mind, that's sharing, you know, that's, that's giving back, you know, but that right. could have been, that could have been misinterpreted just like everything else, just like with us, with the spirit plates, you know, so we don't have a form of gluttony, you know, we make a spirit plate and we take it outside for, for the animals to have some, you know, the spirit animals to have some. So, you know, that's just a way of showing no gluttony. So, yeah, but it's, right. you know, it, it's just, you know, it, it's all, it's all just trying to figure it out still, you know, it's not an exact science on, on how to read them or to interpret what their actions are going to be, you know, basically right. if, if you've got a good, a good gut instinct, if your gut's telling you something, my best advice to you is to follow your gut instinct and that's it. Yeah. No I learned doubt. to trust my gut years ago as a cop. Yeah. You get that, get that feeling on the back of your skull. We like, yeah, I really shouldn't be here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's time to take a step back and call for an additional unit. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we didn't have the luxury of, of not going in. Uh, you know, you know right. it's it's either go in or it just doesn't get done, and in those in those conditions, you you've really got to uh, rely on your situational awareness and watch your surroundings. And that's that's the same in the woods. I mean, there are predators out there that can and will kill you that have nothing to do with with cryptids. Yeah, yeah. When, yeah. when, when we harvest the moose and we're quartering it up, we usually we have at least one person standing guard constantly watching over us, and whoever's doing the quartering will still constantly be making sure because nine times out of ten we're dropping a moose in the thick of it and you're literally surrounded by coastal brown bears you know and, yeah, it, yeah. and blood will bring things in for miles oh yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh, a grizzly can what uh, a brown bear can smell blood from how far away far enough <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not a biologist myself but yeah quite oh, a distance yeah. yeah, probably at least, depending on the terrain, probably at least nine to ten miles. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a, probably. That's a, yeah, so yeah. Well, say say uh, thank you real quick to to Robert Miller for the super chat. That's awesome, brother. Uh, Steve Garza had an interesting question. He says, "Why do these things get aroused when attacking humans? Is it a pleasure thing for them? Many stories of them urinating with their parts at attention to keep things clean. Uh, that's primate behavior." Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's been observed in gorillas and chimpanzees when they when they attack. And I don't think it's something they they, they yeah. control. It's just like a, a, just a biological process. That that's been observed yeah. in, in lots of species of primates. Yeah, I do it to my. I do. Yeah. I do, you know. I piss myself sometimes too when I attack someone. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't count when you're at the bar, Anthony. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a couple of jacks in me. Yeah, I forget. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Uh, I gotta liven it up. Yeah, that's also a way of, that's also a way of uh, showing dominance too, though you know. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Yeah. I know. Just dogs do it. I mean, they do do it. Dogs will do it. I watch. You know, my two dogs. You know, when my my, my uncle's male goes out and does his thing, my my male will go right over and right on top of it. Just. All right, your sense gone now. Yeah. I'm here, so yeah. You know, and, and you know, we all we can we can speculate. You know, with certain yeah. things we've witnessed yeah. and and certain things that people share with us. But I I have issues when I hear people with a a list. One, they do this. Two, they do this. Three, they mm -hmm. do that. I, I I can't I can't participate in that <laughs> list. It's right. it's like where'd you get your PhD? Because there was no PhDs in the bushes when I was being attacked studying this shit. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know where they're getting it. You know, I I fear there's an echo chamber of certain thoughts going around that aren't necessarily based in the day to day reality of, of what's happening. Um, huh. Not to say that certain people ain't having certain situations. I'm just saying. I find it dangerous with the lack of knowledge we have to have any list other than don't go here, be careful here, you know, make sure you got a large enough caliber gun where you're going, mm -hmm. you know, X, Y, or Z. Outside of that list, I, I can't see one yep. just 
a legitimate one myself. Well, even when you when you talk about behaviors that have been observed in known animals, there's always outliers where animals don't act that way. Uh, right. Right. This, right. Just the, the, the the accepted norms as as so to speak. Uh, like for example, I was in Rocky Mountain National one time, and I rounded a hiking with some friends, and I rounded a bend, and it came almost nose to nose with a grizzly bear. I mean, I could have done that. What I do to my dog all the time is reach out and bop it on the nose. I was close, and we're, and I told my buddies not to run. And of course, instantly I heard. I'm standing there looking at the bear, and it looked at me, and I looked at it, and it just kind of went its own way, and I went back the way I came. But had that been, you know, had it had cubs with it, or it had been right before, uh, right before, or right after hibernation, I'd have been toast. Right, but it's uh, the same here. It, yeah, it wasn't hungry, and it just looked at me like, oh shit, and I'm looking at it like, oh shit, and we just agreed yeah. to go our separate ways. But that could, situation could have gone very bad. Well, it's like it's like when people don't know anything about Florida and gators or wild pigs, they get the misconception. Oh, if you get in the water with the gator, it's going to attack you. No, it's not. I mean, the worst time of the season to get around a gator is during uh, mating season. That's the worst to be anywhere near a gator. Female That's the worst land. time to be around most animals. Well, yeah. yeah. So I've been in the swamp hunting pigs, and I've been four foot away from a gator. Never attacked me. You know, even with pigs, people are like, oh, wild pigs are dangerous. Yeah, they are to a certain point. You know, it's just they're not like a grizzly bear. They're not going to turn on you. Yeah, it's yeah. like people are like, well, it's going to bite you and gore you. Well, yeah, you piss it off enough, it will. You know, right. Like, most like likely when it comes to question. bears, mm -hmm. right. When it comes to bears up here, I was raised a good bear is a dead bear. And and that's not to just go, you know, wanton waste and yeah. kill a bear. It's it's the fact that if that bear is coming to your smokehouse when there's so much salmon in the stream, right. something's wrong with that bear. It's yeah. compromised in some way or another, and it needs to be put down. Right. Somebody's uh, feeding it. Well, right. Somebody fed it. It's not. It's used to humans. So it's like. You or or it's so old, its teeth are gone, you know, and right. it's looking for an easy meal. So you're more susceptible to being, you know, victimized right. by, well, that, you that's know. That's what happened to that guy they called the grizzly man. You know, he <laughs> well, interacted with those bears. So, yeah, yeah, one, he was an idiot. But two, it was a bear that it was getting old and couldn't, it didn't really forage well on its own anymore. Saw an easy meal and ate him and his girlfriend. Oh, well, the best, yeah, he right. brought, his, brought his girlfriend with him. That was the best. And if he oh, was yeah. really the grizzly man, I that wouldn't have happened. Oh no! <laughs> no, the grizzly man became grizzly man. He did. You know, the only yeah. thing they found to him, I think, was his teeth. No, and, and they they found uh, the majority of him was eaten. Same with his girlfriend, but they found his rib cage and, uh, yeah, okay, a hand and part of his skull. It, it, not much, though. You know, uh, I mean, yeah. a lord, a, a bear yeah. that big can make short work of a full sized human. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. And that's that's why I'm real cautious when I'm out in the woods. Like, uh, I mean, what was rare is we found a dead black bear when we went to a clute in a lake. It was like wow. right about less than 100 yards from an encounter location. And that kind of threw me off for a second because I was like, it's so rare to find a dead predator. Mm -hmm. And here mm -hmm. it is right here in front of where we're going to go film for this uh, encounter location. And that just kind of. I don't know. It didn't tell me. Um, so <laughs> it, it, there was no obvious marks on it. That's he didn't up. leave a note. I, I think it was self-inflicted, but <laughs> he didn't leave a note. <laughs> Suicidal bear. Yeah, he had enough. He was like, "All this beautiful scenery and fish. Oh. Fuck it, I'm done." <laughs> uh, you know. But uh, <laughs> he was mad because he couldn't get good internet out in the woods. That's it. Right. That's it. I, I wouldn't interview him. He couldn't take it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, it was just some strange stuff happens in the deep woods that no one ever sees and then by chance someone will come along and see something crazy and, and you know who oh, wants yeah. to share yeah look at the difference that's some strange shit look what happened deep in the woods there you know yeah i i, I would rather <laughs> not have that kind of experience <laughs> that's all, all bad right there all yeah. bad oh god yeah. Oh, I can't. Everybody's 
Everybody's going off the comment at no Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a joke, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh man. Oh, yeah. You know, I've uh, I've gotten a few encounter uh, emails that involve little people and Sasquatch in the same same incident, right. and that's kind of different. I. Uh, hearing those things because it's coming from different sources, you know, uh, mm -hmm. different tribes and, and what have you. It's it's kind of eye opening. I've never seen a little person or, you know, little people or anything like that. Uh, I yeah. had an aunt who passed away who until her dying day, you know, told her the, the exact same thing about seeing the little people and uh, that and like wolves, you know, having, you know, training wolves, taking them out of the den. That mm -hmm. that's kind of a, a not a new thing. But it's new to hear about it from different, you know, uh, yeah. there's a guy, Derek Davis. He, he shared an encounter from Peterson Bay. Uh, there's an encounter from uh, Coffee Point and places up, you know, what we call Snake Lake. I don't know what they call it uh, on a topographical map, but, you know, there there's accounts of that. And it's like if it wasn't bad enough, you know, if, if you're out in the woods to worry about wolves or a hairy man, mm -hmm. yet, you know, th there's a possibility of you know, them working in concert, that, that's a really creepy right. thought. Got you a know? bunch of munchkins running around the woods with axes and hatchets and shit that want to chase you down. Yeah. I yeah. See that, that's another unhappy thought. You know, a, a relative of mine, an elder, she was telling me about her experience down on Unalaska and this Sasquatch imitated a baby, a known baby crying, yes, known baby from that. the neighborhood to lure them out. That is a okay. level of cunning that is just unreal. Right. Um, I mean, the story you told, the, the story you were telling about that is that if they were in a house, they were in their cabin, right? And they, heard they the were in an apartment call. building on Unalaska. Right. Yeah. I you saying they were that. lured out looking to help the baby. I mean, that is just so cunning to, yeah. to prey on a woman's natural instinct to be protective of a child as a means to lure him out it is just, uh, that. Well, even the one that you told me about with the dog. I've heard that, that, during, that dog barking, you know. Yep. I've heard that yep. during the lower 48, too. A number of times people would be out camping and they would hear a baby crying somewhere out in the woods. I'd be like, why is there a baby crying out here? Right. There, and, you yeah. know, no logical reason why there would be a baby out in the middle of nowhere. Right. That's crazy. Like, like he was telling a story a couple of weeks ago, Fred, in one of his stories about the guy. He had that one dog that ran out and the, the Bigfoot imitated the dog. The dra and he did. Yeah. The guy went after it, and that's when the dog got smashed against the tree, right? Yep, Rebel. So, um, yeah. That that guy, Don, man, he's still uh, – I, I talk to him every once in a while, and I was trying to get the exact location of where his cabin was to go there and, and kind of just check out the area. And uh, unfortunately, he, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, he's he, – you know, I even sharing that if you watch right. the video at one point i take a micro reset so i didn't break down crying when i was sharing that experience because i know hearing I know. it from him it took three different calls to get through that whole thing because he kept breaking down that was his retirement buddy you well, know he about it I mean, right? I mean i got i mean i got two pit bulls that are like family to me just like you know da's got you know harley you know and i'm sure you i mean to me they're my babies you know even though i hunted them they were hunt yeah. dogs I mean, they sleep with me and everything, you know, the wife loves them, you know, and, you know, when they go, man, it's part of the family. Of course, it's very devastating, you know, like people right. are with horses. People are so attached to horses, too. I see it, you know, when the horses yeah. go, it's just devastating to them. So to see your dog get smashed against a tree again, with one of these, you know, 10 foot creatures. Yeah, that would piss me off yeah. to no end. Yeah, it, it made my blood boil, uh, but just hearing that grown man cry the way he did on the phone, it was right. so sorrowful and so painful. It was like I had to I had to hold the phone away and just kind of trying to, you know, collect myself because that's that's real love and passion that he right, was expressing, right. you know, through that sorrow. Well, it, it was that one was a rough one. Uh, one I one have a couple other encounters about dogs that I haven't shared yet just because I, I have a hard time. Right. I tried to make the video a couple times, but then I'll get to a certain point and I just I just gotta stop. I'm like, yeah. uh, I'll do this another time. It's you know, it's um kinda of like anytime you take encounter stories from people, 
the ones that always always um, affect me the most are the ones where you can see the physical change in them when they're reliving that story. Like Fred, the first time you told us the story about the the, the cabin incident, you were shaking. Yeah. Uh, your dogs kept coming over and checking on you. you dogs yeah. pick up on 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 how people react, and yeah. my dog does that to me. Like if I'm, my back's really hurting, he'll come check on me. So when those dogs were checking on you, that was to me that was that was emotionally affecting me because I could see how much you were struggling with it. And they, you can't yeah. fake that. Right. And someone asked me, they were like, well, why, why do you keep going out in the woods? You know, you got to be careful. And I was like, you don't understand. You guys are just coming with me on a therapy session. That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm going and I'm sharing someone else's encounter. But me yeah. being even out here in the woods, this is if if I didn't do this, I, I would never come outside. Oh, yeah. I, I would just, you know, and I can't just exist. I, I got to live. It, it's just, uh, you know, and. Recently, I tried to reach out to to my relative that was under the under the kitchen table clutching the thirty odd six, and you know I was trying to just get him to talk to me about it, and he still will just change the subject, and then automatically he's got to get off the phone, you know, um, he's got to go, and that it, it bothers me because we were all just thick as thieves for thirty one years. This one night destroyed everything and for people who say well no one was hurt i say bullshit everyone no. was hurt you know oh, yeah. and so i don't i don't care for that kind of outlook on it that just because you may have survived means oh they meant no ill harm but right. I, I don't i don't buy that one bit you know well you know, look at the number of missing so, 411, 411 cases uh, the ones that always affect yeah. me the most, the ones that I uh, that I uh, take the most heed to, is the the missing four one one the hunters. And my theory is that you know, like Ant in Anthony's case, he had one in a in a scope yeah. and didn't pull the trigger. But I think the missing four one one hunters are guys that took the shot. Yeah, very well could have. Uh, I mean, there was one where the guy was up in a, a certain mountain range that he had caches of things, and, and still was telling his friends he got lost. The dude knew the mountains like the back of his hand with mm -hmm. spot camping gear, survival gear all over the place, but yet he's lost in his backyard, essentially. You know, that makes no sense. Yeah. You know, I, I know the pressure that well, I was I know, feeling. I know, in guys. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know guys part. that have unloaded a 30-30 a on, on uh, a Bigfoot. And I'm back. You're thinking that they unloaded a 33rd on it to find a full shell on the ground. Just so racked it. They yeah. were so out of it. Yeah, just racked the 3030 up and basically just sped the shells through. Right. So, right. you know, right. I mean, just basically emptied it out. <laughs> well, they, they taught us yeah. in the law enforcement academy. This was years ago. They taught us that during a critical incident, like when you're exchanging gunfire, and, and law and law enforcement officers are trained to train to uh, train marksmen. We're trained to be spot on, but when the lead's flying in your direction, it's case by case study all across the U.S. have have determined that law law enforcement officers uh, uh, marksmanship drops to less than ten percent during critical incidents. That means you're missing the target a lot. And I think the same thing happens with Bigfoot encounters. People are like, "Oh, I know, I hit it." You know, I, I, I can yeah. tell you from to, from experience at the twenty five yard line, and the, if you're shooting at farther range, it's even going to be more. But when you're when you've got your weapon up. Just that much of a wiggle is that all the difference it takes to make it to miss the target entirely. No, it's like the story Fred was telling the same guy, yeah. I guess. What he hit him with, a 4570, you said, three times? It was standing by his truck? Yeah, yeah, the one that crumpled, fell down, and then ran off. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, yeah, 4570. Um, someone asked me, you know, do, do you think it died? And I, I always answer the same way. I, I fucking hope so. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope I hope it died, you know, because yeah. if it was willing to do that, what else has it been doing or willing to do, you know? Um, I, think, I think a lot of it's shot placement, too, when you shoot, and do you, know, you guys know from hunting. Yeah, I know. Shot, I mean, shot placement's everything. I mean, you know, yeah. 
I, I learned that on that riverbank because I had already resigned myself to death over the hours of sitting there quietly. So I wasn't like shaking uncontrollably right. anymore. I was fearful. But when I put my three shots on that thing, I heard each round just thuck, oh, thuck, thuck. Yeah, you will. Uh, and That's the whole thing. You it just uh, uh, you know. That bothers me so bad, man. Monster uh, Radio says, I wonder if the Squatch up in Alaska are related to the Genosqua. They seem to be a bit more aggressive up there. It's, yeah, I, I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, it's, it's it's a good theory, but it, who knows? I mean, everything's more aggressive in Alaska. It seems like yeah. the, everything the, the yeah. grizzlies are bigger and far more aggressive, especially the coastal browns yeah. or Kodiaks. Yeah, it's like going to Australia. That's everything just, that's Australia just, wants to kill you. Yeah. What was that? William, that's you cut just out? the things that we know. Of yeah, right. Just the things we exactly. know. Of. Well, and, and if you if you take bear bear behavior as an example, get right. a little farther north and look at polar bears. Oh yeah, they're they're confirmed man eaters. I mean, they will they will track yeah. a person down and eat them. Yep. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cases of that. I'm surprised you, you don't know. have any sightings by you, Fred, with the polar, uh, polar bears. bears? In a, well, in a, in a breeding with the uh, coastal brown bears, like they've been doing. Uh, well that. There's there's uh, studies done up more towards the North Slope where that is the case. Uh, a guy not too long ago killed a hybrid, you know, yeah. and in Canada they're, they're having situations like that. I'm a little further south. Uh, okay. Alaska's really, really big. So when you look at it on a map, it's not really uh, that telling on size difference because we could fit 19 states into Alaska. Right, right. And yeah, not all of them are huge. tiny little states, you know, so uh, – there, there's probably more of that going on than we realize, you know, because biologists ain't everywhere, you know. <laughs> That's a fact. Uh, Tanya Willis says, I heard a guest on another show say that they really press the thought that Sasquatch dogmen will approach with the same energy and tension that a person has the time advocating gifting. Uh, yeah, I think gifting is a dangerous thing. I know here in Missouri, it just wasn't that long ago that uh, I think it was just a few years back. There was a lady who, were, who was feeding black bears off her deck. And um, she, I think she went into the hospital and was, wasn't there to put food out for the bears. And when she got home, they had ripped the back door off the hinges and just basically decimated everything looking for food. So if, if feeding right. any wild animal is a bad idea. Yeah, even Monster, yeah. Radio, Monster Radio said it too. I just put it up. Gifting is always yeah. a bad, bad idea. You know. Well, the, the last thing you want well, to do is have a wild animal associated don't. with food. What was that, Wayne? I'm sorry. Yeah. You don't want to, I said you don't want to gift food. You know, you no. never want to gift food because that gives them the opportunity to learn where food's going to come from and they're going to continue to do that and want that. You know, yeah. Uh, when when my when my people gifted it was, it was like eagle feather to bat. William, you're you know, cutting out really, really bad. bad, you know. Mhm. Mm so it was always you something, were cutting out real bad there or or we made something intricate you know what i mean mm -hmm. so but never food i can tell you one person that's not going to gift and his name is fred right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> fred will give, if fred I, will give if the if gift of lead get, yeah heavy caliber high velocity that's it <laughs> there you go chew on this for a while uh, yeah, all you can eat. Smile mm -hmm. wide. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, no, you, no. your stories, even the stories you're telling, Fred, were, you know, every, it's just every time they encounter one, they're they're just very, very aggressive. You know. Yeah, are, are real creepy. I mean, some yeah. of them, the people will take it as aggression, but it, it's real creepy behavior. Like some of the running back and forth, the pacing, right. following them. It's almost uh, like. I, I don't know this to be certain, but it's almost like they feed on fear, that fear right. energy. It, it, it's weird, you know, because in, in a lot of cases, they had us. They had a lot of other people dead to rights. We were dead men, but yet it, it didn't work out that way. And it was like they were feeding on that fear. All speculation, of course, but it's just real. Something's off. You know, there, there's scary, something. Yeah, scare you away from the area. I mean, you know, not to come that back. Yet. Could be. William got a question for you from uh, Monster Radio. Uh, he says, 
Uh, I'd be really fascinated to hear William's take on playing Native American music for them. Does it work? <laughs> that must be Ryan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I can I can honestly say that I have taken the flute out and actually, you know, um, but it's got to be a certain pitch. Um, I always take a, a flute out that has a certain pitch on it. Um, but... I'm, I can I can honestly say that so many people have tried so many different things, but I don't think uh, flute music was the one that they most people would think of. But uh, it works for me, or at least it did. Um, so I mean, if something works, you know, if it's not broke, why try to fix it? You know, right. that's my theory on it. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I've 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 had a lot of good with it. Um, I don't know about taking like a, a recording and playing a recording because when I did it, I did it, you know, myself as being out there physically doing it. So, um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. That's kind of a, kind of a gray area, I would say. So. Mark Napier says, how about the spider crawl? Now that's creepy. <laughs> uh, they, uh, good. Yeah, we'll save that. that. We lost great. Fred. Yeah, we lost Fred. Hopefully, he'll be able to get back in. Um, Hopefully, he will. There he is. There he is. There, there you are. are. Sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. I hit, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Happens all the time, man. We're just we're just glad you're back. Yeah. Um. um something I was going to ask you guys. Um. What What do you guys think the uh, about the, the 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 theories that a lot of researchers use with tree knocks, what do you guys think about that? I've I've <laughs> seen one in the open do a, a make a, like two Louisville sluggers hitting each other with its mouth. So and its hands were to its side. So I I, I think it's how we're interpreting it. Right. I, I don't I don't see them yeah. walking around with a nice little club for banging. I, I really don't. They may, I, but I'm, I can make a really loud noise with my with my tongue. I, I think that's why William is laughing his ass off because he knew the question was coming <laughs> about that. Because he knew Fred was gonna say the same thing with its mouth. Because it, everybody, you know, you guys aren't the only guys that said it that they're popping their mouths doing that with their mouths. I've been saying that for a while. Yep. Right. Dude, yeah. they that yeah, they make that sound with their mouth. And, I, you know, <laughs> you take it for what it's worth. If you guys don't want to believe Fred and I, then don't believe us. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> take it well, for it, it doesn't worth, change a thing. You know? <laughs> I, I'm, just a, I'm just a guy, and I can make, I'm just yeah. a normal dude, exactly. and I can, I can make a really loud noise with, my, with just my tongue. Does it count when you do it under your arm like a fart? No, <laughs> that's that's spraying a your own personal brand of cologne, and that may not may have the adverse effect. <laughs> I think Anthony may need to reevaluate his methods. <laughs> he might he might be a little more hey, successful. Might work. Uh, you never know, man. Yeah, or it might it work might. like it might work like no urine. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> cool. What happened to Anthony? I don't know. He went out there and never came back. I don't know what the hell. I, he was doing those fart things under his arm. And I don't know. Come back I'm, sure somebody will, I'm sure somebody will comment in here about that. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I just no. assume you found a mate with it and found bliss <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, the, cre the stuff the researchers are coming out with. Some of the stuff is just... You're just like, ooh, it's like, okay, I'm not mentioning any names. I'm not going to do that. Right. Well, I, I get a lot of people that want to share their photos with me, and, and I, I preface by telling them I don't mind, but if it's if it's a, a dark spot in the woods, that means something to you. It's not going to mean nothing to anyone else. Now, if it's right in front of a game trail camera or you got a real clear photo, then you got to be willing to share with everybody because I'm not right. going to be some gatekeeper of any – anything anything of evidentiary value i, right. I gotta share it. i'm not gonna just be any kind of gatekeeper on any kind of knowledge of it you know that go that gets us nowhere no that's true we, we da da gets them too and we get guys that want to want to send us pictures and like you see it and i'm like nope 
Don't see no. him. Sorry. Sorry, I don't see him. Um, Jinxo said, uh, did Fred do an oh. expedition? I knew you were planning one. Yeah, uh, we got forced out by the wind. Uh, we were going up towards the Knick Glacier, so that got aborted due to weather. I, I am going on expeditions, but again, in our culture, we we were never we we're told to never follow them, never seek them out. So uh, it's new to me. I'm I'm not a researcher. I'm just some dude in Alaska right. that's going to check some shit out. But uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely going on expeditions. Uh, we're going to go up to the mud volcanoes uh, next, uh, probably within the week. There's reports of upside down trees up there. So. Oh, and nice. that's by Tulsana. So we're going to go up there and check it out. Uh, I, had, I had someone tried to tell me that the upside down trees were just pranks that were pulled by loggers, uh, that they'd used heavy equipment to shove the tree back. But that, that doesn't explain some of the places where there were no logging trails and no way they could have got the heavy equipment in. Right. And if, if you watch that, that Eklutna that Lake well. video. Oh, sorry, not not to cut you off, William. If you watch that Eklutna Lake video, you can see a root ball of a tree that I, is, is silhouetted behind me. What you can't see in video is it was at one point shoved in the ground and had been forced back over over time. It had leaned back down, and uh, the winds get pretty high and they get pretty you know hard blowing. But no way to flip that thing and stick yeah. it in the ground the way it was. And just over time, it the tree had rotted and just kind of laid out. And I, I walked right over it and. I come across uh, like tracks in the tundra uh, in the video. I'm like, nah, that's subjective. I, I don't want to put out I any kind of clickbait shit, you know, yeah. uh, anything could have made that impression. Uh, and without, you know, enough of them going in a line, it just defeat the purpose, you know? Yeah. That's the best when they get out there and they yeah, go, look, I can, see toes and I can see, you know, Yeah, the, the one thing I was going to say too, guys, is a lot of the times those trees that are upside down won't have machine marks on them. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, none at all. Machine marks. I, I, of yeah. all the pictures of them I've seen, because I've never found one personally, but I know there, there are people that say they're here in Missouri. They've seen them in the Mark Twain, but I personally haven't found one. Uh, but I know of all the all the, the video I've seen of them, I've yet to see one that looked like it had any kind of machinery mark on it. Very true. Yeah. Um, is there anybody else, DA, like when they you watch these documentaries, guys, and you know, I don't I sometimes I don't see it and maybe I'm wrong, but when they tell you, Oh look, there's toe impressions and there's this and that, I just don't see it. You know. Yeah. It's too subjective, you know. Right. It's like they're putting shit into your head until oh yeah, there it is. I see it now. No, I don't. Yeah. And that's the whole thing. Thank you. I think, William, you uh, cut out there, brother. Yeah, you cut out, William. What was it? No, well, I just said fake news. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. when in my uh, in my remote uh, AF video, I was walking by a bunch of different types of structures and, and broken branches, and I pointed out a couple, but. Uh, I try not to focus on that stuff when I'm out there because, again, you know, the power of suggestion, right. I, I don't want to be that guy. I would rather bring something that's, you know, a 100 percent and not just uh, some speculation. Although, you know, the argument can be made, well, you're sharing stories that are speculation. OK, fair enough. I'm, I'm talking when it comes to hard evidence. If I'm going to present something, I, I'm going to have to know through and through that it's going to be uh, bulletproof. So to speak, yeah. you want a picture. Yeah, you get a picture. You want you want a clear picture. You want something there that you can explain. You don't want something that's well. well maybe it looks like one. No. Okay. Yeah, I, I would rather have evidence that they have to struggle to debunk. You exactly. know, and Absolutely. not just dismiss. So, you know, I'm kind of bummed out. I won't be able to make the New Yorkuk trip this year, which is fine. You know. Um, I just surpassed like 3,000 subscribers yesterday, and that kind of nice. tripped me out. That's awesome, dude. Congrats. Oh, thanks, man. Your um, channel's growing like crazy. Yeah, and it's 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 kind of trippy. You know, I, I don't I don't view myself as some kind of draw, you know, so I, I guess people are just like, and I just, here's what it is. Catch you on the next one. 
you yeah, know, just keep it simple. You're, you're getting stories from firsthand accounts, and most yeah. of the stories that you're getting are from people that live in Alaska, or yep. or, or their tribal members that you're getting stories from. So right, um, what, I got one recently from. Uh, right, I got one recently from a guy in Finland, um, and his wife had to do the uh, translations because she went to college here in the U.S., but. He was telling, uh, he was sharing with me an encounter that happened, uh, geez, uh, turn of the uh, like early 1900s, where mm -hmm. uh, he was a 13 year old. His grandfather was a 13 year old boy and uh, was part of this crazy thing. I I'm going to make a video on it, but what I'm getting at is there throughout history, every single encounter up here past a, a certain latitudinal point has been uh, just just that way aggressive and i th i think it's totally has to do with the lack of population and I'm you know sorry. just I'm everything sorry, fighting uh, DA, i'm sorry fred do you see this da on the chat yeah i just hit it okay i'm sorry fred somebody was trying to put up a porn site on the chat for dating i'm sorry uh yeah i get that in my comments too i immediately removed that crap it's like what the hell i didn't mean to cut you off brother it just pisses me off when you got those Dumbass is trying to put shit up on here. It really does. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no. No worries. No worries. <clears throat> yeah, I think one I got of the blocked uh, and reported. I didn't know if DA caught it or not. Or Meg. I I and I know Meg would have caught it. Meg would have caught that right away. So. Right. Yeah. It, you know, it's just it, it just it just annoys the shit out of me. Sorry, guys. It just does. You know. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. But anyway, hey, uh, Marty's yeah. in the house. I know the boss. Hey, Marty, what's up? Um, um, go ahead, go ahead, Anthony. I was just gonna say, you know, just just about what Fred was saying, and 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 you know, William with the clickbait and and blob squatches and and you know all that crazy shit. I mean, I, I just don't see it, man. A lot of times, like me and Da won't he won't put. St I'll send stuff to him. And I'll be like, do you see anything? He's like, nope. Nope, don't see it. We, you can't put it up there. You really can't because you you look like a moron. Because people will be like, yeah. I don't see it, man. I really don't. You know. Yeah, I would much rather go on an expedition and go, hey, you know what? We didn't see shit. We didn't find nothing. Right. That's what it was, you know. Yeah. And, and leave it at that. Versus, oh, there's an impression or there's a broken stick. Right. You're in the woods. You're gonna find broken sticks. It's just, you know, it's what it is, you know. And I, I've just. Too many subjective things, and it muddies the waters. You know, it, it makes people's actual encounters and experiences uh, just, it diminishes them with right. a bunch looks of nonsense. Like you know? Yeah, it looks like you're lying. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, it, how many people just, believe my story or believe DA story when he was doing that videotaping out there? He had no idea that thing was behind the tree. Right. Someone caught it. Right. Are you, you talking know? about the outshine on your video that time? No, no, yeah. no. The, when we the the video of something leaning out from behind the tree, we did. I didn't spot it. It was it, it was a year and a half later before somebody yeah. spotted it in the video. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, I, I mean, there's probably more of that that goes on than we realize. I'm sure there's a lot of vacation video footage you could probably look through and take a fine tooth comb and and, and see stuff like that right. happening. You know. Right. Corey Cole said he I had a question. He says, "Have any of you heard of the ones that smell bad or trouble?" Uh, I never heard that they were trouble, but I, I've smelled some funk out there. I, I don't know if there's any correlation between the smell or being more aggressive or anything like that. But Yeah, they have uh, them in Florida. Skunk ape. Well, the skunk ape comes from a different terminology. It's not the smell. I'm always... It's... it's So... Well, is that William? You kind of cut out again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've always, yeah, I've always been told that the smell that they smell is a warning or a defensive mechanism that's what my dad always told me growing up um that it was some way of of making you know that you shouldn't be there so so it's like a buck and run almost with the smell of the stud there yeah their, pretty their much gland. yeah okay like a musk yeah. like a musk gland or something. yeah it, it comes off of the palms of their hands too a lot and is that why they're so feet. Is that why it's so, well, they, there you go. Is that why they're so greasy, oily? Everybody says their hands are very oily. 
But they leave yeah. handprints. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine. And it's not the kind of oil that just wipes away. I, I've seen I've seen the hand marks on on like uh, smoke houses and whatnot. And even when they go to wash it off, scrubbing with the little Brillo pad and some Dawn dish soap, it just smears around a lot of the yeah. time before it comes off. Yeah, you're not the only one that said that. And I've seen pictures of it on car windows, mm -hmm. on cars where they've washed the car two or three times and they're not coming off. You yeah. Know, that's the crazy part. Yeah. You know. But it's like I said, no one's going to know, and I hate to say it, man, no one's really going to know about these things until somebody actually does an autopsy on one of the bodies and actually can get in there and look and explain. Right. I guarantee it will explain everything that everybody's seeing. Well, I'm sure the government has, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But we're not going to be told that. It's like yeah. we said before, you know. If Fred was a guide hunter and he was guiding people to hunt, and the government comes out with it this year and says, "Hey, by the way, we got a you know ten to twelve foot hairy man running through the woods," and they are aggressive sometimes, I guarantee you, Fred's business is going to go belly up. No one's going to go out there and go with them and go, "Well, I'm, I'm going to go shoot a fucking moose," but um, I got to worry about this other thing. No, you're not going to do it. You know, it's. You know, you're taking your you're taking your life into your own hands, especially if yeah. you go to Alaska. Like Fred was saying, they're you know the aggressive. It seems to be Alaska and Texas, from what I understand, and, and I think DA will agree with me on that. That for some reason, certain parts of the country, man, these things like Florida. The only time I hear them being aggressive is when they're actually harassing a family in a house. Okay. Uh never encounter them in the woods like that like you got like william was saying and fred was saying they're aggressive towards people and they want to spook you and freak you out you know it, i have a guy that i'm going to probably have on the show and i'm going to have probably both of you on here especially william um this guy is being harassed left and right on his property and he's in florida um and he doesn't know what to do with this thing. Um, it's I've heard it with my own ears when I was on the phone with him. You know, he's, he sent us pictures and stuff like that, and I showed the pictures, you know. Um, but he's at his wit's end. I talked to him the other day again. I see, He goes, man, they're still, they are still harassing the hell out of me. Still, you know. It, it, it's the a sad thing. Yeah. And that's what me and DA were talking about. You know, it's just, it's, it's to a point, William, that this guy, you know, it's his dream house with his wife. He's, he's just fed up. He's fed up. You know, he doesn't know what to do, man. And, and I don't even know what to tell him what to do. You know, he wants me to come up there and, and, you know, help him. And he goes, Hey, if you could shoot one, shoot one. I'm like, well, I don't know about that brother, but you know, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how to even answer this guy's question. He wants this thing gone. And there's five of them on his property. Not one. Five. Yeah. Mm. That's got to be rough. Yeah. And it's aggressive towards him, but not the wife. The one male. Ooh, that's that's male. real bad right there. Right. You know, yeah. He doesn't even go in his yeah. backyard. Right? You got can't have two alphas in the same space and that's what i think it is and that's what he yep. thinks it is he knows it's a big male the other ones don't mess with him he'll be out there cutting the grass and he'll i've, I've shown da the rocks we put them on the air these things are almost bigger than a softball come flying at him from the wood line mm. okay mm. i mean it mm. ripped, it ripped the bottom of the door open to get into the house in the back um it broke the window out. What else? It actually, two stories, man. One of them jumped on the roof and ripped the lights off, the motion lights off the, off the uh, side of the house. Yeah, so, man. Yeah, this, this, this thing, it's very aggressive. Uh, yeah, one thing I bring that I did. Belt head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing, Anthony, to let to let them know that uh, the more outside lighting they have that's motion sensing, um, bright lighting, 
the better yeah. off they're going to be. The better off they're going to be. And I mean, put put motion sensing lights everywhere and make sure yeah. that they're bright because that that's one thing that they hate. They hate light. Yeah. I'll, I'll talk to him tomorrow about that. I know he's going to try to get on the show. Um, I'd like to have you guys on, or William, have you on, Fred, have you on, give him some ideas of what he can do. Um, I don't know what to do, man. I really don't. I mean, you know, it's to me, I'm flight or fight, and I'll fight. You know, that's just me. Um, right. Best advice I have is uh, don't shoot center mass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Aim for big it's arteries. Yeah. 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 I mean, headshot you know, neck. He's a, he's a, he got his wits in, man. This this guy's really out of. He just had a heart attack uh, last last March, and he's like, oh, shit. he's like really housebound now. You know, um, he's not in good health. Um, he's just starting to get back on his feet. You know, it's only him and the wife. And why this thing tried to get into the back door is that he had puppies. His dog just gave birth to a, a litter of puppies in the back, and he had them in the back of the house in the. Uh, the porch area and the porch area is screened off with windows and stuff with the door storm door this thing tried to get in there and get to the dogs uh tim kungo baker reported the same thing when his german shepherd had pups one of them tried to get into the room with the pups well there you go there you go uh nona boss continuum has his question for fred and william do you have any idea about images vanishing from photos no uh i mean maybe a yeah. digital photo um not, not that I'm aware of. It's not something I have any experience with not. either. She's, she's had some creepy stuff, um, um, Marty. Marty has had some creepy stuff when she's taking a picture. It'll be there, and then the next time she, it, it'll be gone, if I'm not mistaken. Right, right, uh, Marty. It's weird. It's weird. She been she was taking pictures. I think she was mentioning it. They'll just disappear off the camera. So. Mm. Uh, Pink Dolly also had a question. She says, can Fred elaborate on the little people he mentioned earlier? Uh, yeah, it's just some mythology like um, January 17th. We don't take uh, we cover all the mirrors uh, it, it, in the culture. It's uh, considered the, the thinnest veil uh, time of year. Um, mm -hmm. And if you have a mirror, they can uh, steal your soul or, you know, take you with them. Um they dance underneath the aurora borealis, you know, the northern lights, uh, live near the mountains by the trees, uh, sing like children in the trees. Uh, if you whistle at them, they supposedly uh, dance and light up some, uh, things of that nature. Uh, the next part of my, uh, what I'm working on with the channel is the little people. So in the near future, uh, there, there'll be a lot more of uh, sharing of those kind of uh interactions and encounters with the little people okay um they've uh, been known to abduct people haven't they yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. another one we're warned about don't follow the little people um uh what i was told by my auntie before she passed was is they they speak to you in a way that uh, you didn't know you would like to be speak to in that way. A certain tone they use is almost hypnotic. And mm. uh, yeah, you, you don't understand what they're saying, but it makes sense to you. So you want to follow them. Uh, that is, yeah, that's, that's some creepy stuff right there. Yeah, the pug wedgies are the same way. Pug wedgies and, and the little people as far as... Uh, you know, down here in the lower 48 are the same way. Um, they have been known to try and attempt to uh, kidnap people, mostly children. Um, yeah. But they will try to adults. They will try to kidnap adults. Um, they do try to take pets um, or yeah. coerce them into coming in. Um, now, what they do with them, we have no idea. So, I mean... That's just, you know, right. up, up, up for speculation, really, um, at least for the ones down here. Um, there are some little people that you can, you can uh, you know, interact with a little bit more respectfully with, and they'll leave you alone. But the uh, pug wedgies and stuff like that down this way are more of a, uh, a mischievous little person. And yeah. they're always, 
always looking. They're, they're like coyote, always looking for their next person to, to trick, you know? What I um, and I've also, uh, I've heard a story of a guy whose dog went missing and one of these things lured his dog and uh, had it under its spell somehow to where his dog that he's had for several years that was loyal to him wouldn't come to him and followed the little person off into the woods. Hmm. So, you know, I mean. What are these things? What are these small people? I mean, what are they, what, what do you, what, are you, what is your, 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 your native background? They what are they called? Oh, well, like William was saying, the mischievous, uh, out, nothing good. Um, a lot of laughing from what I've heard involved when they're trying to abduct somebody. It's like a, a reassurance. Oh, we're having a good time. Come on. You know, things of this nature. Uh, yeah. Real creepy. Real creepy. Uh, known to make children noises. You know, uh, laughing, giggling, things of this nature. And, hmm. and I, uh, I've actually heard children's laughter in the deep woods and as soon as i heard it i immediately was like uh i i, I didn't even want to wrap my mind around that you know it, being in the deep woods when you're you're so remote that even uh, a 911 call you know some of the villages they make a 911 call the troopers will show up in a few days right. the weather pending, you know so you're not going to get any immediate rescue and so when you're in that deep of the woods, your whole mindset changes and it's so hard to express to people to where when you're within, you're not within hundreds of miles of any civilization. It, it's a totally different feeling of isolation. You can be surrounded by the most pristine, beautiful yeah. stuff in the world, but you're going to feel so intimidated just at the thought that there's no one going to help you, you know, that there's no yeah. one that will even yeah. hear you scream basically. So, yeah, there's just something about being real, real deep in the woods. Someone had asked, uh, "How big are they?" Uh, from what I was told, uh, less than three foot tall for the for the adults. And um, yeah. my aunt said that the the little people she saw, they had a, a little one with them, and it almost looked like about the size of a pumpkin, like a medium sized pumpkin with legs and arms, as far as shape, not in color, just in shape, kind of like a little just little things uh not very big at all yeah jinxo says if i ever see a little person yeah hear children, children laughing in the deep woods i'm out of there yeah <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's one thing too, um, yeah there's one thing too guys that uh that uh, i found out too though uh one thing that you'll find uh bigfoot sasquatch hairy man whatever you want to call them um they're always drawn to children's laughter too Ooh. and yeah. i was always under i was always i was always given the impression uh, by my, my father and you know all, all the people i listened to growing up that it's pretty much because like the because they know that the little people in the forest laugh a lot and that that kind mm. of triggers the Sasquatch to come in and see if it's the little people or not. Now, right. whether it's true or not, I don't know. But that's just that's more folklore with with the legend. So, well, look right. how many of the missing four one one cases thing. involve children. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. you know, w William brings up a good point. I've I've heard up here thousands of miles away, similar stories about the little people and the hairy man. Um, I have some encounters that I've just kind of stowed away for the little people portion of the, the project. But, you know, uh, there was a case of they suspected little people stole this girl from a village and they came across because uh, the whole village searched for days. All they found was the little tracks and her following these tracks and it disappeared into some willows in the winter. Uh, like two weeks later, they were down a trail, a game trail, hunting for spruce grouse or something. And they came across a little person and decided to shoot at it. And within moments of shooting at it and it, it hiding in the trees and running from them, it was making a squealing sound. And within moments, there was a hairy man encounter. So that that's another creepy aspect. I mean, if that if that is true, uh, that that's just. It, it totally 
it changes everything if if it's all interconnected in different ways and we just missing those little pieces that will just make it all make sense you know mm -hmm. yeah it just oof. Mm -hmm. are these are these little people hairy are they hairy or they're not hairy uh hair on the on the forearms longer to kind of like uh around the wrist but not like a fur just like you know a hairy guy's arms but just mainly along the forearms and in the back of the neck you know that type of thing going down the back do you um, think these things are mistaken to be a smaller smaller sasquatch or bigfoot I, I don't think ones? a full size one would even just it'd be justified as a juvenile sasquatch okay. um also uh i was told when the the real bad ones are around little people wise you could tell you'll see small footsteps and you could tell they were dragging their hands because the in the folklore the arms are longer on the men on the male ones that are the uh the rulers of the roost so to speak and they drag their arms behind them you think uh, is, that, that when the bigfoot bigfoot showed up you think they were there to yeah. protect it or to hunt it uh you know that's a good question because uh when the encounter was shared with me it, it, it was told to me like they showed up and then their attention turned to the hairy man versus connected. the little people and, and there was no like uh mention of the little hairy man going hey or the little people going hey hairy man it was them that tried to shoot me it was more the hairy man showed up so they had bigger problems you know what yeah, i mean yeah do you think? Do you think it was attracted to? You said it was made like a scream, screeching noise when they shot at it. Do you think it yeah, was coming like because it was wounded? Because they thought it, one was wounded, or it, they came to defend it? Yeah, valid point. And again, you know, I don't know, but that would make sense that if they thought, you know, oh, th there's there's prey over there, you know. But uh, the way it was relayed in the story was like it called for help. Right. Um, that, that's how it was relayed, but they could have misinterpreted it as well. But again it's all speculation you know it, it's just i remember years ago i would get really bizarre reactions in the woods by using predator calls because there used to be a bounty on coyotes here in missouri and we would go out on the weekends and, and hunt coyotes uh for the for the bounty because they were they were attacking livestock and sometimes we would get really weird reactions when we would play predator calls yeah um, up here, we, you know, you guys have a different culture with the coyote hunting and whatnot. The first time I heard someone uh, using a, a predator call, I was like, what the hell is that? It's like a dying uh, rabbit. Or... Yeah, exactly. Uh, typically, we don't use those kind of things. We may, you know, make a, a female moose call during moose hunting season. But other than that. It, it what uh, and maybe some ducks and geese you know you take a, a blade of grass in between your fingers and you know you make the squawking sound of the duck but other than those two things I, i've never i mean there was never any calls for like you know bringing in predators or whatever we use a lot of like uh, recorded like like rabbits in, in danger or deer in danger there's the, there's a number of calls you can blast that will bring in coyotes and things like that and that's that's how we would bring them in um, and right. of course, also we'd call in turkeys, you know, get, use the little reed in your mouth or have the little wooden ones to do turkey calls. Uh, so I've, right. I've, we've, we've used a lot of calls over the years, duck calls and things like that. But the predator calls do work, we work, work well. Uh, but sometimes, you know, like one time we, uh, we were calling in a pack of coyotes and we heard the coyotes approaching. And then we heard all hell break loose in the woods, and the coyotes were, were squalling and screeching like something something tore that pack up. We never we never knew what it was. We never found it, uh, but they didn't get any closer because you know something ambushed and, and killed probably most of that pack. Right. You know, um, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, some of the hairy man screams that you know. There, there's something to be said about a creature that can scream at you from hundreds of yards away and yet you still feel it. You know what I mean? That there's just something to that amount of power that's just awe inspiring. When when we were on the riverbank and we were hearing that the imitation owl hoots with the click popping mm -hmm. simultaneously with it, that was some of the most awesome sounds. Like it, it was surreal, but yet in the same time in the same hand, I couldn't wrap my mind around how freaking creepy that was. Uh, 
I was it, out, it's just, yeah. I was out in the Mark Twain one night and I heard a screech owl, but if it really was a screech owl, it probably weighed 600 pounds. I mean, it was just this extremely right. powerful right. blast. It was a screech owl call. I mean, it was dead on, but it was so strong. I was like, God dang, it's either on the tree above me or, you know, this thing's a monster. Uh, but it was really, right. it was like, like you said, it was one of those surreal moments. You're like, that sounds exactly like a screech owl, but it sounds like it's coming through a freaking megaphone. Yeah. Right. And, and one thing yeah. I noticed during that encounter as well is, their attempt to sound natural dissipated real fast after the first couple. It, it, it was just painfully obvious. It was an imitation and a very, very loud one. And that, that it, again, it felt like we were being hunted because every time it happened, they were in a little closer position. And that's just not a, a happy feeling in the woods. You know, it, it's just not. Well, there was one account I heard. Yeah, this when you're Northern being California. flanked. Yeah, I don't want to get flanked by anything in the woods. That, that's a no. terrifying feeling. There was one account I heard out of Northern California. There was a guy that would go out every evening to feed his chickens. And he would take a bag of feed. And he'd go out there and he'd go, here, chicky, chicky, here, chick, chick. And would throw the feed out. And I uh, said he was walking out to, get, uh, to put the feed out one night and heard this raspy voice from the woods go, here, chicky, chicky, here, chicky, chicky. Oh, yeah. yeah. So he threw the oh. feet up, got his ass back in the house. Right. Yeah, I would have too. Man, that's oh, just. We lost William. Uh oh. Where it sounded Zion. like his signal was intermittent. Yeah, yeah he was. Where will fifty six seventy four says I had screech owls scared the hell out of me. Yeah, I've. Oh, yeah. Yeah, screech owls are a terrifying sound, especially if you don't know what it is. I've gone deer hunting with guys who've never really spent much time in the woods. You hear a screech owl, they're like, what the hell was that? I'm like, it's just now. Calm down. Right. Or even uh, porcupines mating, man. Holy oh, crap. Yeah. Or foxes that, will that make is... a really weird set of noises, too. They scream. Right, yeah. Porcupines scream. Just crazy. Panthers. I've heard panthers scream, you know, and everybody's like, what the hell was that? I said, that's a, you could tell it was a panther when they... They don't make that that roar sound. They actually sound like a baby, like when they scream. It's crazy. Yeah. Man. I, I, Creepy. Well, I remember when, as a kid, one of the things that terrified me the most until I found out what it was was a dang peacock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have them here in Florida. Those yeah. things will make a hell of a ruckus. Yeah. Hey, hey William. Man. Hey. Go go ahead. Now. It's bad tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Even ours is. I got yeah. weather. Yeah, we got bad weather, weather in the area. You know. Um, I don't know who this is. It just says Facebook user says I had the six hundred pound screech owl experience in North Carolina during my tracking class. Oh, that's yeah. Robbie Rains. Yeah, Robbie, it's yeah. not showing up. You're showing your name for some reason. Yeah, Corey. Yeah, Corey Cole says yeah. Peacocks yeah. Used to sound like women screaming. We haven't. And the weird thing is, man, when these peacock farmers down here in Florida, these peacocks don't, they don't realize these things get loose. And when they get loose and they start getting out in the woods, that's it. You got a whole colony of them running around the neighborhood and you can't <laughs> catch them. And we had them out here for the longest time, man. And you can hear them just yelling. I mean, like bloody murder. It scared the hell out of you. Um, yeah. William, I, I know the in the in the uh, I believe it's um, Cheyenne custom. The owl is an omen of death. Uh, what is it with the Lakota? Is it the same? It's well, um, well, the owl's not a symbol of death. It's a it's a symbol of of basically uh, something tragic happening. Um, a bad omen. I, I mean, it's. Yeah, it's just a, a messenger of, of ill fate that's going to happen to somebody, whether it's the person that hears it or sees it or or someone that that person knows. Um, and whenever I hear the owl, and it usually does happen, you know, whenever I hear the owl, I have to physically see it. Um, somebody I know usually is becomes very ill and passes away. So... Mm. 
Yeah, we, we don't have anything like that up in our culture that I've, I've ever heard of or come across. Not to say that other tribes in Alaska may not have, you know, something similar. Um, but like the Eklutna Indians up here just down the road from me, you know, they speak a dialect of native tongue that uh, they could speak to Sioux Indians, you know, down down from the plains. You know, there's something to be said about a, an original language at some point. You know, uh, I've had encounter stories where people have heard uh, a Yupik sounding language, but it wasn't Yupik. It was Yupik like not like the samurai chatter or anything like that, but more distinct tones from like the the Yupik language. Right. So, you know, that that's pretty interesting, too. Do you think it was something they learned to mimic or if they have the, or that they have a language similar? Uh, from what was shared with me, it, it was a language. They they were communicating back and forth with each other with this language that was very similar to Yupik, but not nothing of what they were saying could be recognized. Huh. Yeah, DA, DA, you guys guys got to remember too, though. Back in you know before the white man showed up, you know there's there's legends and stories of of our native people having you know a, a, a same language as them, knowing how mm -hmm. how they speak. And we could interact with them on that 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 level of because of language, um, but I, I believe it was in in the state of Washington. Uh, I don't know which native uh, nation it was, but they used to come down. The, the the Bigfoot used to come down from the mountain, and uh, they used to have wrestling matches with the younger Braves, and apparently one of the young Bigfoot got a little rambunctious. And ended up accidentally killing the one young brave. Now, hmm. what what happened after that was the Bigfoot felt so remorseful for killing that native, that young that young man, that young warrior, that they retreated back to the ridge lines of the mountains and quit communicating with mankind altogether. So. Hmm. That was, you know, that was something that was, you know, was told. And, I, you know, like I said, I can't remember which nation it was, um, but I know it was out there in the Northwest. Um, but, you know, I mean, it is what it is, you know. At one mm -hmm. time, apparently, you know, and it's not just that native nation. It's even my people believe that we used to be able to communicate with them. And my people even believe that we at one time way back when we could communicate with animals too. Mm -hmm. So right. I, I know just, I know in the Cherokee oral oral tradition that they said sometime in their distant past that they used to trade with the clans of Bigfoot and that the Bigfoot spoke a rudimentary form of Cherokee. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's not far fetched, you know? I, I mean right. you know, I, I'm kinda jealous of those kind of interactions because everything we've dealt with up here is just totally different level so i mean i like hearing of people's encounters down in the states and and more peaceful encounters but i can only listen to so much of that because then i'm like i i haven't seen it so i you know right. i just i don't dismiss it i just can't relate to it you know so it's kind of it, it's it's good to hear but a little frustrating at the same time because uh, just you know how it is up here it's it's just so vastly different Steve Garza says uh, Mexicans in Mexican Indians say cuando te te colete oh canta indio muera muera. Uh, I, I know I butchered the heck out of that. I'm I'm sorry. My Spanish is horrible. This is which means when the owl hoots an Indian dies. So owl hoots are no bueno. Yeah, I can, and that seems to be common in a lot of a lot of cultures that the owl isn't like an omen or a dark presence. Yeah. Right. It's just awesome. Uh, maybe it's all it is. Right. Yeah. Here's a good yeah. one for you. Right here. He and he may be on to something. I mean, you know, when when uh white settlers moved farther and farther west, when they, they would encounter something like that, I their part of the first reaction would be to shoot at it. So yeah. it would have forced these creatures to become more and more reclusive. And so any 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 human is bond leading bad. Um I'm trying to there was there was one account I was um I believe it was in Lewis and Clark's journal. Where they saw a hairy creature and shot at it. Right. Oh, I also did. heard something about that as far as their journals that there's a, an actual journal missing from the collection. 
yeah. that had to do exclusively with the interactions of you know the Sasquatch because they, uh, I guess uh, someone had said. Now it's all speculation. I don't know if it's true, but they had the first form of air guns, uh, you know, like BB guns, but a much powerful version, and they had uh, shot volleys at this thing and and some other stuff. But again, you know, without the actual journal to substantiate that that's what they wrote it's just kind of one of those old wives tales you know mm -hmm. well, yeah, i mean think about it i mean how many it's not just your 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 tribe or or william's tribe all through the united states uh, all these native americans way 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 back when were interacting with these creatures and trading with them you know and just so happen right. to be we come up the white man comes up and starts screwing everything up, which we normally do. So, you know, <laughs> and that's what happens. You know, it's, it happens to this day. Yeah. Well, it, it's unfortunate, but, you know, the mentality of, of westward expansion was, you know, if if we didn't understand it, shoot it. I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, how much, yeah. how much more peaceful would have the would have the westward expansion been had they listened to the natives in the area instead of just trying to force them out right so, yeah would, be a uh, vastly yeah. different place that's for sure and, and that's another difference in culture as well we we have no oral tradition of ever interacting with the hairy man it's always been a cut and dry adversarial kind of kind of deal and right. you know well, even Teddy Roosevelt wrote about it in, in his uh, memoirs. Mm -hmm. um, and he makes a good point. I don't know who it is, Facebook user. But yeah. And damn it, there is that sex chat again. This we are me off. by that tonight. I'm going to record as much as I can. I wish I could find out who's doing it. It's really. probably, probably the problem. I'd just love to pay him a visit. Yeah, it's yeah. probably just a spam bot. I'm trying to block it and remove it as fast as I can, but unfortunately, it just keeps popping up. Ridiculous. Sorry, everybody, for that. Really, that's just... Uh, can't. Really. Yeah, but Teddy Roosevelt wrote about it in his journal also, Fred. Right. Uh, well, some people had speculated that that story about Bowman was actually him. Right. Uh, I believe that firmly. I do, yeah, too. Yeah, just because of how he framed it and and whatnot and you know if that did happen to him i could understand why he framed it in the story of someone else you know yeah, he, he uh, had political aspirations yeah and, and i have people that will uh send me an email about a friend and within the second or third correspondence and when i ask to talk to him directly you know via phone call because i i prefer when i can to talk to the person that had the experience so I can hear their emotion on how they dealt with it. So, you know, I could treat it with the proper respect because right. I don't want to sit there and share someone's experience and laugh at it, you know, or, or right. something like that. But well, you're, yeah, it's uh, not, you're some of them will that. start with, it was my friend and then right. come to find out it was actually them, you know? Yeah. So, you know, well, a lot of that happens, name. I'm sure. Look well, you what's know, her name, Sarah, Pen what is it? Sarah Penguin, Fred from Alaska. Um, yeah, I don't recognize her. But you know, uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Exactly. But she had an encounter and she finally came out and said and talked about it. And she admitted it. She was, I wasn't going to talk about it when I was running. I mean, it would ruin people who think you're a fucking kook, you know? Right. Did Same she thing. say where she had it? Had no. the encounter? No. They uh. were, she was brief about it and, and uh, they were talking about it. And I tried finding the video on YouTube again, and I can't find it. But I remember her saying it, and they were talking to her about it. Um, right. I think, I think it was on a, one of my gun shows. It was a show that she was on, um, and they were talking about weapons and stuff. And she just came up, making a, somebody was making a joke, and she actually came right out and said it. And Fred might have activity behind them, people. Hold on. Let's see what's going on. Oh, no, it's good. I'm good. <laughs> Some snack <laughs> on the have something snatch him up on live stream. Holy, yeah, there he goes. Right. That, would be a, that would be something to have on the live, live on the air. See this big yeah, arm maybe it could happen to one of you, but you know, you're, we're talking about me here. <laughs> well, we're, we're, none of us are sitting in the woods. <laughs> right, right. Very come out of that of nowhere. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, one, one of the things, going back to the Teddy Roosevelt thing, uh, when you, if you're if Bauman really was Teddy Roosevelt, it makes perfect sense that one of the first things he did as president was create the National Park Service and cordon off yeah. millions of acres of land that we still don't have ex access no, to. No, no. Or if you right. in the, the limited access we do have, you can't go in armed. No. Right. And, and in certain yeah. places, you can't even video record. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I don't know if they changed that, but for a long time, you weren't allowed to record in there either. Oh, no, no, no. You're right, man. You're absolutely right. Even when uh, uh, Dave, Dave Politis was trying to get into some of the national parks uh, to do his stories, his video stories, man, he would put in permits because you needed a permit, and they would deny his permits to do yeah, some videotaping right. out there. And, and, and they asked him why he was videotaping, and... If I'm not mistaken, if I'm wrong, people, correct me. Um, he was actually talking about Bigfoot at the time and with the missing persons also. And they right away, they were like, no, 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 no. You can't videotape here. You can't, you know, you got to do, no, we don't, we don't allow it. Yeah. So that's the weird thing, man. I mean, we're never going to get the truth. I mean, they're finally coming out about UFOs, like I said, after how many years? Come on. I mean, really? I mean, they, you know, they, they only have they, they, only have, they only have their own reason for coming out about the UFOs. So exactly, you know, they're, you got they're Navy pilots use that for some other. Right, you got Navy pilots coming forth yeah, now. They're, they're like, hey, listen, man, this is real. This is what we tracked. You know, the government's not telling you the truth. So how do you deny that? You got you know four Navy pilots coming, yeah. you know, with impeccable careers. And they're going to lie? Come on. They're not gaining anything right. from it. Crypto and isn't there million. a restriction no, but, on guns in national parks? Aren't, yeah. aren't you not allowed, yeah. so you're not allowed to You're not allowed to carry firearms in most in most national parks. Yes. Uh, yeah. Cryptid 559 says in California, no drones are allowed in national forests. Yeah. 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 That's the way it is. There's so many weird laws, man. There's so they, they come out with some of these. I mean, like we just talked about it the other day, too. There's a pamphlet in the state of Florida and other states too, but you got to look for it in the pamphlet. It's prohibited, and it says prohibited to take a swamp ape and kill it. Except in Oklahoma, where there's a $3 million bounty on a live one. So, why would you put that in a brochure from FWC, Florida Wildlife, in their brochure? Right. I had read somewhere where uh, there's a federal law against killing any unknown species to mankind. Yes. Uh, which kind of, which kind of, you know, CYA type of thing, so they can mm -hmm. automatically come in and take it from you. And I'm telling you right now, if I ever have a chance and, and I have to put one down, not that I'm out to do that, I'm going to do an autopsy on the spot and film as much of it as I can. And I said the and, same thing. You know, yeah. Otherwise, same you thing. know. You just be one more guy that said I killed one, but the black, you know, the men in black came and exactly. took it from me. Well, the, yeah. it was I think it was during the uh, the pandemic when the federal hunting laws were quietly changed. Uh, I was reading something about it, and, and uh, they went in and added dialogue to some of uh, some wor uh, wording to the existing hunting laws to include certain near human chimeras. Yeah, yeah, and that that it, that it, alone it, right there should freak people out. But when they're talking about things that are almost human. Yeah. And, and that's another thing that bothers me about just people in general, like, uh, you know, the naysayers that say, oh, I haven't seen any hard evidence. But if they were to take the time and pick through the legitimate evidence that's out there, there there's not much more of a conclusion you can draw. You know what I mean? I mean, right. I, I know. So therefore, I, I don't I'm not worried about evidence. But, you know, just as to help the cause move forward i'm definitely if i come across evidence i'm definitely going to share it but i just uh, i don't That's know if it's the cognitive dissonance or or just uh you know i i wouldn't have been lied to i'm, I'm smarter than that kind of deal i i don't know i don't get it though that's uh that's the kind of that's the thing about about this community for people that have had some sort of experience no no evidence is really necessary but for the people that don't believe no evidence will ever be accepted. Right. Yeah. 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 That's that's very yeah. true. Short of dragging one in hey, and going, look. Yep. Uh, guys, I'm going to cut out of here, okay?
no, right, no problem. problem. Thank you for coming on, man. Right. William. Hey, it was nice talking to you, William. Fred, I'll talk to you later, brother, okay? All right, man. Anthony, DA, take care. Be yes, safe, man. man. Thank Be you for safe. coming on. Yeah, I think William, he takes his, he has, um, he's still going through um, some uh, issues with his cancer, I think. So he's taking medicine, I believe. So he has to take it a certain time. So, yeah. But yeah, man, it's the same thing. It's like the government. It's like we said, the, the government's going to, they're going to, it's like I said, you're not going to walk out into the woods and go camping with your family and go have a picnic when you know these things are running around out there. Once they disclose it to the, to us, you know, it's it, no one's going to go out there. I wouldn't, right. I, I wouldn't I bring think my kids out they, there. Uh, right. I think even if they disclosed it, there's going to be a large number of people that ain't going to believe it and, and still mm -hmm. go out there in hopes of having it proven for them you know what i mean and, and right. like da said for some there there wouldn't be enough evidence you know i it just right and then they start uh, coming up missing and stuff and coming up dead and then right away that's yeah. it oh that oh you know it's like yeah. how much more proof do you need like we said like i said man we don't know what these things are i don't know you don't know da doesn't know we no. we only speculate what they can be and these, you know, I love when people come out and say, well, they're this, this, and this, and their DNA is this, this, and this. Well, if that's what it is, why don't you just disclose it to everyone? Right. And and come out and say it instead of beating around the bush. Right. You know, just come out and yeah. say it. This is what this is what they are. This is who we have proof of this. You know, I mean, if you're doing it so far and you're coming out with it, and you're giving little tidbits here and there. And it is true, because I've seen one, the government's going to contact you. And be like, hey, man, enough's enough. No more. Don't start talking Perfect. about these things and start bringing shit out. And you're making, no, not yet. So, I mean, well, and know. if you think about it, they, they have a large amount of power. You know, they could sick the IRS on you. They, you know, mm -hmm. there's a litany of things they could just mm -hmm. immediately put on you. And you, you what recourse do you have? You you can't right. fight the government on that level, even right. with the best lawyers. It, it won't it won't matter. Yeah, we know somebody that was talking about something, which I'm not going to mention anybody's name, and some government entity, three letter three letter, you know, government alphabet game <laughs> exactly contacted them and said, "Hey, enough's enough. Back off," you know. Kind of shook everybody up, you know, that was involved, you know, so, and I take this person's word for it. I mean, she, you know, it's, 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 it is what it is, you know, it's happened yeah. before and it, it'll happen again. You know, it's the same thing I said, if somebody goes missing in a national park, why are you bringing special forces in to look for right. a person? Yeah. Why? Yeah. It, they, they, yeah. You're wasting their resources. That's not. A resource you're going to throw out there to find the kid yeah no yeah. doubt yeah, that's a that's a large expenditure right you're not going to yeah. do it so something else is going on that they're not telling anybody you know to have a, a force like that to even go out there and look for this person or, or this child and it's been numerous right. numerous stories uh that you know people said well the fbi was involved in the next thing we know there's a, a, a detachment of special forces or guys in, you know, uniforms with uh, with uh, rifles, with M4, you know, M4s and, and, you know, sniper rifles that are, you know, with rucksacks just hiding out into the forest. Right. Come on. But then again, they have the plausible deniability to say it was a training, you know, exactly. exercise. You know what I mean? Right. They always got something that they could fall back on that's plausible, you know? Right. But hey, guys, right. not not to cut it short on you, I, I got some other things I got to attend to and whatnot. But uh, I, I thank you guys for having me here this evening no, and inviting me in. Love having uh, you on, man. You know that. Love having you yeah, on. For sure. Everybody uh, I try to Fred's shout channel. you guys out in my videos. I hear you, man. Hey, I appreciate and, it, man. Everybody go to Fred's sure. channel, please. Um, and uh, Let me uh, the link and I will send it out again. And hit him up. And uh, if you have any good stories and you're from Alaska or visiting Alaska and you ran into one of these things, hit him up. Yeah, definitely. I just posted hey, guys, the link I'll for Fred's channel. The... 
Fred, I just posted the link for your channel, and I'm posting the link for uh, William's channel as well. Guys, make sure you go over there and like and subscribe to their channel. Check yeah. out all their videos. Fred, man, my man, thank you for being on again. Yeah, man, thank uh, you. It's always a great time. Uh, be careful yeah, out sure. there, and uh, look forward to, oh, your, yeah. to more videos, brother. Yeah, thanks, guys, and, and we'll talk to you later. All, all right, right you be safe, man. Yeah. Oh, boy. <sighs> Yeah, we had a good, so a good one tonight. Yeah, you know, definitely. Well, World World 5674 says, do you really want a million people out there with brand new rifles blasting everything they yeah. see? That's true. He's got a point. It's, yeah, he does, but I don't think it's going to happen. I think most of the 90% of the people are going to be scared shitless to go out there once they know it's real, you know. It's the same thing as, um, what is it? What, I mean, you go into the jungles... And you know they know that you know there's tigers out there. You're gonna go out there, go hiking through a jungle? No, probably not. Exactly. Not unarmed, anyway. No, I mean that's the whole thing. You know these things are so mystical. No one knows anything about them. Man. Flat Rock has a good point. It says Florida hunting reg regulation specifically states you cannot bag a skunk ape. Right. Why well, say that in law unless they're stating they're real? Exactly. I've seen the brochure. Actually, I have a copy of the brochure too. I gotta, I gotta send it to you so you can put it up. Oh, I'd like, um, to, I'd like to check that out. It, it says it on the very, la I believe it's the last page, in small print, right below, right above where it says you can't take hogs at certain times, and then mm -hmm. it's right below it. It's weird. They just put it in there. You, you would miss it if you weren't looking for it. Um. Yeah, we're coming up on the two-hour mark. We'll start wrapping things up ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, folks, we had a had an amazing panel tonight, having William and Fred on, bringing their perspective to, to the cryptid community. Um, make sure you guys like and subscribe to their channels. They are both just absolute yeah. fountains of great information. Uh, they put, put out great content. Uh, I've got another super chat from, from Tombstone. Thank, yeah, thank, you, yeah, thank you, man. It says, uh, awesome. Been, uh, that time has been awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Much, uh, much appreciated. Um, remember, folks, there are no experts in this field. And anybody that's claiming to be an expert is probably trying to sell you something. Uh, William and, and Fred, uh, they bring such a wealth of knowledge of, the, uh, of this subject. And I, I vastly appreciate not only their time, but their, their, their knowledge that they shared with us. Uh, the Native American perspective is... is an amazing experience on, on not only the cryptid field, but in, you know, life in general, because a, as a people, we've really gotten away from nature. Uh, and learning to appreciate the world around us is a big step. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll find a lot more, find we have a lot more roots. And that's, that's why I say when I go out, if I go out looking for cryptids or go out to film, even if I find absolutely nothing, I still had a good day in the woods. Um, and again, remember, there are no experts in this field, uh, no matter what some people might claim. Um, we, we appreciate each and every one of you guys, William and Fred, both thank you guys so much for being with us. Um, wanted to take a quick second, now that uh, we don't have the have our guests on, but I uh, wanted to, uh, to uh, dedicate this show tonight uh, to my cousin Monty. Uh, we, we lost him on Friday and uh, had the funeral today. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm, it has been a lot in my family here lately. And I'm afraid there's probably more in the near future. And I, I don't really want to go into that, but it's. We're getting old, man. Yeah, we're, we're getting just getting old. Yeah, so. Uh, you know, yeah. it's, 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 you know you're, you're in your 50s. I'm in my 50s. I mean. Mm -hmm. It's it gets weird. Of, you, you and I are almost the exact same age within days of each other. Well, the day it's the same month. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's, same it's month, same up. year. Yeah, it's catching up to us, man. It's it really is. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, kind of. Sorry, I kind of derailed myself there for a second. Um, I hope you guys will check out you know both their channels. Uh, if you have uh, are unfamiliar with my work, you can check out my books. Uh, at daroberts.net. I have a lot of uh, books that involve cryptids. They're fiction. They're fictionalized stories, but I've spent the last almost four decades digging into the cryptid world, and I use actual accounts 
that I have collected and, and spoken to eyewitnesses and everything. I use those accounts to create the behaviors of the creatures in my books. So I try to make the behaviors of the creatures as true to life as I possibly can. So uh, I hope you guys will check out those books. You can find everything I've got over at daroberts.net. Um, but uh, again, I appreciate each and every one of you guys so much. Thank you guys for all the prayers and, 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 and good wishes. Thank you so much. Um, it, um, yeah, it was it was kind of an interesting day today. So, um, yeah, I I know, man. I you know I just went through it, you know, a couple of weeks ago with my mom. You're going through it now. It's like it doesn't stop. It really doesn't. It's just one thing after another. It really is. But um, yeah. In, anyway, um, thank you guys so much. Remember, uh, we've got the the uh, Dogman Conference coming up on the 13th of next month. Uh, there's going to be some really good talented people there. People I can't wait to, to hang out with and talk. You guys can find those. Go to any, any of my Facebook pa Facebook pages or groups. You'll find the links to this. Uh, and it, it's going to be in Paris, Tennessee on the 13th. And I also have this one that I've been booked at in Lexington, Missouri on the 23rd, 24th of, of uh, September of this year. It's called Fall Into the Supernatural. I'll be uh, one of the, uh, the, 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 I'll be dealing with the cryptid portion, not necessarily the supernatural portion. Uh, so, you know, get your tickets for that event. Uh, check it out. Just go to eventbrite.com and put in Fall Into the Supernatural. It'll take you right to it. Uh, but I hope to see some of you guys at those, at those uh, events and, uh, I'll be there with books and I'll be more than happy to sit and, and share stories and talk with with you guys. Looking forward to, to meeting a lot of you guys. Uh, really appreciate each and every one of you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, well, I've said it many times. I'll continue to say it. We don't have fans. We have friends. Uh, love hanging out with you guys. We have such a good time. And remember, stories are journeys that we take together. And thank you all for taking that journey with us. Uh, so, you know, from the bottom of my heart and I'm sure the bottom of Anthony's thank you guys for joining us. Yes. Uh, we appreciate each and every one of you, uh, William, um, and, and Fred, thank you guys so much for joining us. And, uh, we will uh, see you guys on Saturday night. And we had really good feedback on the, the show we did the other night where we just read accounts and talked about it. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that again here in the near future. So hope to see you guys on Saturday night. You guys have a wonderful evening and we will see you on Saturday night. Good night, good night everybody. everybody. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.